Hello people, hope you're all well and good. I'm going to do a video today about finding places to walk where you live when you start off and how to keep your interest up. Well, thanks for coming with me today on this walk. Today I've brought you to a local walk called Gorse Hall. It's about five minutes away from where I live. And it was a place I'd heard about when I first moved around there. And you know, I heard about it the odd time, but I'd never been so easily these days with the internet I googled it I found out exactly where it is and I looked at it and it looked really interesting so I thought sort of history and uh, tales about this place so I'll come down and check it out so luckily where I live now right on the edge of Manchester there's a lot of green spaces and loads of places to come and walk but I've not always lived here I used to live right in the middle of the city but I found even in the middle of the city if you look hard and research a bit there's usually places where you can find to walk. I used to live right outside city centre for a few years once in a place called Beswick really built up it's just like city really but I found a nice little green strip of like a green belt of land there where I used to go walking the dogs so there is places if you look usually so if you're lucky you'll find somewhere good near you found that your local councils usually have information on local walks, particularly health walks, so that's always good checking. But I found myself at researching myself on the internet for good places to walk and the Google Maps, it's always a good one to find areas, especially if you use the satellite maps on Google Maps, then you can see exactly what areas are green, what might be parks or areas you can go walking. So when you first start off getting into health walking, distance isn't the main thing. The main thing is to inspire yourself to get out and do it. One of the best things about walking is nearly everyone can do it and it doesn't cost you anything at all really. And for me, I love it because I love being out in nature, visiting interesting places. It's just fantastic. For me, it's about reaching back to that sense of adventure we all had as children when you was going on an adventure and exploring places and it was all exciting and that's what I like to try and recapture when I go out walking and doing interesting things. It's like when your kids uh, remember the woods near us, there was rumoured to be an old prisoner of war camp from World War II and uh, I can remember it being a big adventure at school and uh, we were talking about it for days and then at weekend we went off with packed lunches but it was exciting stuff. And sometimes we lose that when we become adults and uh, sometimes it's just great to find that sense of adventure again. So today we're visiting Gorse Hall and this is all the grounds of the old Gorse Hall which is demolished now. I have visited here on one of the very first videos I did about a year ago but I thought it'd be a great example for me to bring you along with today uh, to talk about getting into walking and finding good walks that are local to you. I don't know if you can see that there. It's one of the clues about where we are. So this place where we are today, Gorse Hall, it was actually the maternal grandparents of Beatrix Potter's home. And she used to visit here often with her mother when she was a child. I wonder if it inspired any of her stories. So there was actually a couple of great big mansions on top of here for uh, local wealthy mill owners. All this land that I'm walking through it was the grounds of these mansions. They've long since been knocked down but there's some interesting history about them. Most of this walk today is going uphill but it's like really gradual and mild so you don't really notice it but it's great for getting a bit fitter. Saying that when I started off I was really out of shape a few years ago and uh, when I started off I just had to start off small maybe half a mile a day then every few days I'd uh, 100 meters or something like that and eventually I got up to five miles a day and lost the three stone in a year and reversed the diabetes so it's actually a bit spooky up here there's been some supernatural ghost videos made about this place so yeah it's one of those strange ones so here we are this is the site of the old gorse hall it was knocked down at a certain point but uh, we do, you can clearly see where it was with the foundations. They had some big mansions, I can tell you that, where the posh people, well rich people, used to live. 
So one of the great things about walking for me is some of the stories and tales you can find out. So as an example, I'll give you a story now about this place where we are, Gorse Hall. November the 1st, 1909, shortly after nine o'clock, it was black in the winter. An intruder crept through the dark grounds towards the isolated mansion. Mr. and Mrs. Storrs and Marion Lindsay, their niece, were chatting in the dining room whilst the cook, Mary Evans, prepared supper. The cook was startled to see a man lurking by the kitchen door and with the light being poor, she first mistook him for Mr. Worrell, the coachman. Oh, Worrell, she said, you frightened me. But a split second later, she realized that she was mistaken. This man was taller with a moustache, thinner and younger than Worrell. To add to her confusion, he was pointing a gun at her. Say a word and I'll shoot you, he said quietly but firmly. Dropping a jug of milk, she ran from the kitchen into the hall, screaming, there's a man in the house. Hearing the commotion, George Harry Storrs, his wife and niece all jumped up and ran towards the kitchen. In the hallway, for a second, the two men faced each other silently. A fight started, with Storrs being much the match for the intruder. During the fight, the intruder for the first time showed his fear when seeing Maggie Storrs with the shillelagh she had taken from its wall mountain in the hallway. He called out, I will not shoot. Maggie took the gun from the intruder as Harry Storrs called out, run and ring the bell, which had been set up to alert the local police. Hearing the bell, two police constables started running up the mile long driveway to Gorse Hall. Upon entering the kitchen, they found George Harry Storrs dying from loss of blood through multiple stab wounds in his flesh. He was stabbed again and again and again. This went on until 15 stab wounds were inflicted by the intruder. George Harry Storrs died shortly after 10 p.m. The hunt was on for a murderer. George Harry Storrs was buried on November the 11th. The next day, James Worrell, his coachman, hung himself his body found swinging from the rafters in Gorse Hall Barn. The murderer was never found. So as you can see, there's loads of interesting stuff to learn and find out if you look into the areas where you go walking a bit. So if we go over to here a little bit, away from the other hall, there's a site of an even older hall in ruins. There's actually more to this hall than there is of the other one big old stone window frame there and you can see the big old fire inside so yeah this was an older one to be honest with you there does seem slight sad air about this place still still a lovely place to walk but just a touch of sadness about it but it's quite peaceful so that's nice so over here a short walk from the hall or just was this is the old stable block this is where the coachman James Worrell hung himself. His body found swinging from a rope in the rafters. So if you research your own areas where you live, there's guaranteed to be places of interest where you can walk. Even if you're in a really built up city, uh, you can usually find routes along canals and stuff, which I've done in the past, which can be really nice and quiet. I think if you have a family, you've got children, I think walking's a fantastic thing for them. If you get your kids out walking, it's great. What I found most as a parent is that children like going on adventures outdoors with their parents and spending quality time with their parents. And some of the most memorable things have been when you go for days out, when you go on nature walks, you go beach combing, exploring old castle ruins. Kids love that sort of stuff. Even if you're going out to the countryside having a picnic with the kids for the day, it's great stuff, brilliant. And things like, what did I used to do? I used to go like tadpole fishing with my daughter. She loved it. And you can do all these great things outdoors, getting your kids out healthy and walking. Believe it or not, I've climbed to the top of quite a big hill today while I've been talking about various things. But it's all fairly mild. I mean, you can feel it a bit. It's definitely getting your heart working, good for you. But um, didn't really notice it because I was talking about stuff and it's so mild anyway and gradual the hill. So cool.
also another great way to get started is to join a local health walk group there's health walks running in most places across the country it can be a great place to start off and meet people and socialize which is another thing getting away from social isolation which isn't good for us at all i'm actually in my own walking group which is called the Rongans, which a bunch of us set up and sometimes we do group walks and that's really good a great fun activity basically i get together with a group of like-minded people and we go on a walk and we have a chat have a laugh and usually end up at a pub where we have something to eat or a drink and uh, yeah it's great i can't recommend that highly enough so if you're thinking about it and you're not sure maybe that's another good idea is to try and find a local health walk group so we're right at the top of the hill at Gorse Hall now and we're coming up to what is perhaps my very favourite seat, well public seat in the whole of Tameside, right at the top of the hill at Gorse Hall. It's a little bit cloudy and overcast today but you can see the hills all around, obviously it's a lot clearer in the summer. Um, but we're right at the top of the hill and you can see Staley Bridge below us right down there, little tiny houses. But yeah, it's always so quiet and peaceful up here, we're surrounded by countryside. And it's just a really good place to sit and relax if you're ever feeling stressed or anxious. Or even if your head's a bit busy, it's a good place just to sit and chill for a bit. I mean, I could sit up here for ages, especially in the summer. But yeah. It is a hotly contended seat though with all the dog walkers and stuff and people coming up here. I think they need to stick a few more seats at the top of this hill. So uh, Tameside Council, please take note. Sometimes it's just great to get away from the cities or towns and just sit in the countryside and listen to the nice natural sounds of birds, wind, away from all the nonsense like cars, traffic, all the noisy stuff and just sit and enjoy nature in its natural form so i'm off on the way back down now and on the way back down it's mainly going through a little bit of woodland so yeah it's a nice relaxing walk there is a, an air of sadness because of the tails around the hall but it doesn't bring you down it's an uplifting place to come to and the story just adds a bit of interest and intrigue there's all sorts of little buildings, well remains of little buildings and walls all along the grounds of this old hall. I'm not sure what some of them are. Some of them are labelled, some of them aren't. There's even some ruins up there, I'm not sure what they are. It's an interesting place and if you do, if you're lucky enough to live local, and it's even easy to get to from Manchester to be honest, you just get a train up to Staley Bridge. But uh, if you do come here, definitely have a read about it it's uh, a lot of interesting stuff to learn like I said before it doesn't need to cost you anything uh, walking's easy nearly everyone can do it and it doesn't cost you anything really nothing at all except time and effort and uh, it's well worth it and me being a bit of an anarchist being a punk obviously the health anarchist when I first started off getting fit and healthy I thought I'm not paying for a gym I don't need a coach or gym classes I can do it all myself for nothing and to prove that point I lost like three stone in a year to reverse the diabetes so yeah I did it all myself my own way so it's just a point to make uh, you can get fit and healthy without having to spend loads of money so I think I'm going to wrap it up for today folks so thanks for watching and if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all on the next video bye